What's up guys, in this video, I wanna go against popular belief and tell you not to use the most complicated side. If we were to compare this, um, the left side from the right-hand side on this identity, I think most students would kinda of look at this and say, all right, the left-hand side only has two functions, and the right-hand side has one, two, three, four, you know, four functions here with a plus a, you know, plus a one, that's definitely going to be more complicated. However, it would actually be more difficult, in my opinion, to go ahead and try to take the right-hand side to make it look like the left-hand side than it is to take the left-hand side to make it look like the right-hand side. Now, why is that the case? Well, the case, the reason why is because of identities. Even though this side looks more simplified already because it's already an identity, it's already has some identities, it's gonna be a lot easier to apply your identities to expand one of your um, one of the sides of your identities than it is to try to take a one side of an identity and compress it or condense it down using identities. So in this example and in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna work on doing the left-hand side because even though a lot of students, when they're first learning identities, they remember, you know, always pick the most complicated side, always pick the most complicated side. Um, I'm not actually gonna work on the right-hand side because I think doing it that way is gonna be much more difficult than it would be to try and apply the left-hand side. But again, like if you wanna work it out and you know, let me know, then, you know, hey, let me know. So the reason why, the one thing that like sticks out to me on this problem is the sum and difference form this, right? And so whenever you see the add or subtraction of your angles inside of a trigonometric function, you should think sum and difference formulas. So in this case, I can just go ahead and simply rewrite um, this right-hand side as a sine of X cosine of Y plus a cosine of X sine of Y. And then in the denominator, I have to use the um, double angle formula or sorry, difference formula which is gonna be a cosine of X, cosine of Y, plus a sine of X times a sine of Y. Okay, now the right-hand side has a lot going on, so I'm not even gonna write that in there, <laughs> right? It's a lot. But here's where this problem like kind of comes, here, here's where it kind of comes into a little bit of an issue sometimes, is if you look at the, and again, like I actually worked, one way to work out this problem is actually to work on the left as well as on the right-hand side to verify that it's an identity. And to be honest, in my opinion, that would probably be actually the easiest way to go ahead and do that. But what I'm gonna do in this case is not do it that way. And I'm just gonna show you like, what if you just stuck to one side and you kind of looked into saying, all right, if I wanna stay to one side, um, how am I going to do this? Now, what I would actually recommend to students is sometimes when students get confused, um, one of our biggest pieces of advice is like to convert things to sines and cosines because you might not, it might not be obvious what to do here. Like you can't divide anything out, right? I'm not sure if multiplying by the conjugate is going to like produce anything here. What I want to do is like say, all right, on this left-hand side, what am I trying to achieve? I'm trying to go from here to like a cotangent of X and like a cotangent of Y. Like, how am I going to do that? So one thing I would recognize is like, well, why don't we rewrite the right-hand side is, um, in terms of sines and cosines. So if I did that, I would have a cosine of X over a sine of X. And I know it's a little bit more work, but you know, follow me here. That's a cosine of Y over a sine of Y. And then over here, it's gonna be a one plus, um, again, a cosine of X over a sine of X, and then times a cosine of Y over a sine of Y. Okay, so now again on this left-hand side, right? We don't have any fractions in the numerator and denominator, but on the right-hand side, we do have fractions on the numerator and denominator. Now, typically I would say work on the right-hand side and get rid of the fractions, right? By like, um, by multiplying by the denominator on the top and the bottom. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to show you, well, how can you like create the fractions, right? If, if I want to get a cosine of X over a sine of X, right? That means I want to multiply here. I could write the one over a sine of X. And then another thing I want to get is a sine of Y in the denominator. So why don't I multiply by a sine of Y? there. So I can do whatever I do in the numerator, right? I have to do this in the denominator, sine of X times the sine of Y. Okay. So now you got to make sure you distribute it to both terms, right? So you got to make sure you multiply here to both of them. Now, when I go ahead and do this, um, remember this is going to go to both of them. So let's see what's going to happen. When I multiply this times a sine of X, cosine of X, the sine of X is Let's see, multiply out. When I multiply this out, the sine of X is going to divide out. I'm gonna be left with a cosine of Y all over a sine of Y. And then when I multiply one over sine of X times sine of Y over cosine of X sine of Y, the sine of Y are going to divide to one. And I'm gonna be left with a cosine of X all over a sine of X. 
which guess what? That's exactly what I'm looking for, right? That's good. All right, what about when I multiply over here? Over here, I'm gonna be left with a cosine of X, cosine of Y, nothing's going to divide out, okay? So since nothing is going to divide out here, it's just going to be a cosine of X, cosine of Y, all over a sine of X, sine of Y, and then over here, I'm gonna have the exact same expression in the numerator as well as in the denominator, so that's gonna to equal to a one. Now, what I want you guys to see is, hey, this is the exact same expression that I had, right? over here on this right-hand side. So now I can just go ahead and simplify this. I can rewrite this as a cotangent of Y plus a cosine of X all over, let's see, that's going to be a cotangent of X, um, cotangent of Y plus one. Now, is that exactly the same as it was in my original equation? And yeah, it is. Everything is just kind of switched around, right? And again, the commuter property of addition you know, doesn't matter, the order does not matter. Same thing for multiplication, it's not going to matter. So therefore you can see that these are indeed exactly the same, they just need to be switched around. So therefore our identity has ver been verified. Now, just a quick little bonus if you wanted to see, like if you are able to work on both sides, if your teacher allows that, then one thing I would recommend doing here is just multiply by the sine of X, uh-oh, I ran out of space. Multiply by the sine of X times the sine of Y, on the right-hand side, on the top, as well as on the bottom. So I'll do something like this, okay? And if you do that, what's gonna happen here is now the sine of X will divide out, and then for, therefore you'd be left with a cosine of X, sine of Y, plus here the sine of Y would divide out, so that'd be a cosine of Y, sine of X, and then in the denominator, you would have a sine of Y, sine of Y, sine of X, so it'd be a sine of Y, sine of X, and then over here, you'd be left with a, let's see, the sine of X would divide out, um, and the sine of Y's would divide out. Oh yeah, actually they'd both divide out, so therefore you'd be left with a cosine of X, cosine of Y, which if you notice, was exactly the same thing we had up there. So another way you can kind of work on both sides, um, if you're allowed to do that, but I always like to stick with students, is like pick a side, stand aside. But again, don't always pick the most complicated side. Sometimes look for your identities. Now, if you're not sure if you know all of your identities, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to watch the next video where I talk about making sure that you know your identities and pick the right one. I'll see you in the next video.